Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Academic Coordinates. In this video, we're looking at mathematics, specifically for grade 11s, you know what I'm saying? However, even if you're doing grade 12, do feel free to join us and go and grab your pen and paper and let's do this mess together, right? We are looking at quadratic functions today or parabolas or parabolic functions we actually did tackle such functions previously however we limited ourselves on the vertical shift of the function and also we also spoke about the vertical stretch however in this video we take it one step further and we introduce to you guys the horizontal shift you know what i'm saying of the parabolic graph you know and y is equals to ax squared plus bx plus c is the standard um, equation of the parabola we can take it also to this form this form is called the vertex form we're gonna know more about it and you're gonna appreciate its relevance in our mathematical life okay first and foremost let us introduce some terms a is the vertical stretch of the graph you know what I'm saying and we have established that when we are actually looking um, at functions for grade tens, you know. Okay, a is the vertical stretch of the graph, right? It determines whether the graph is going to be narrow, you know. It determines whether the graph is going to be narrow, it's going to be narrow, or the graph is going to be wide, you see. And if if a is greater than zero, the graph will face upwards like this, right? This is a greater than zero. You know what I'm saying? The graph is going to face upwards. It's going to be all smiles, right? So let us just establish some facts here. Okay. So if a is greater than zero, if a is large, right? Um, the graph will be narrower. But if A is less or smaller, um, the graph will be wider. Um, y is equals to um, x squared. Y is equals to half x squared, right? This graph, Y is equals to x squared, its A is larger than this one. So this graph will be narrower will be narrower then this one will be wider if you compare both of them right okay what happens when a is less than zero what is going to happen when that is the case okay when a is less than zero right um x y when a is less than zero um see we've got a graph like this and we've got a graph like this obviously this is narrower then this is wider okay y is equals to minus 1 over 2x squared y is equals to minus x squared okay let's just establish some facts here so a right if a is larger looking at negative half and negative one we know that negative half right is greater than negative one you know so if a is larger right here the graph will be wider then if a is less i mean if a is lesser yeah lesser or if a is smaller the graph will be narrower you know but only for the negative just because of we are understanding this fact right um you know you know that okay for example let me just put it like this zero one two negative one negative two looking here negative one is larger than negative two you know you know what i'm saying so here if a is less than zero if a is greater than zero you know what i'm saying and also we are gonna actually tackle more points here as we go along 
you know, because of we are now introducing um, the horizontal shift as far as A is concerned. Let us look at the value of C, right? Previously, we were able to establish that C um, is, is, where is for, for a straight line, we're able to see that C is the y-intercept where the graph cuts the y-axis. Um, and also, we're able to, to identify for a parabolic graph where there was no vertical shift that C um, is the point where or the value where the graph will actually cut the y-axis. But looking at this, if we have got, for example, f of x is equals to um, ax squared plus bx plus c, c will still be the value where the graph cuts the y-axis. And at the y-axis, x is equals to 0. So let's say f of 0 is equals to a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. So f of 0 will equal to c. So c here will be the value where the y, uh, where the function cuts the y-axis, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's look at the value of q. Okay, before we look at the value of q, from, from ax squared plus bx plus c to before we look at q, 2, a into x minus p all squared plus q. For us to get to this equation, we use a process um, or a technique called completing the square. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I think let me just do a quick example on how to complete the square so that you guys will actually appreciate it because I think it's a powerful tool that enables us to, you know, get to this um, form. Let's say, for example, you had a function f of x is equals to um, x squared plus 6x, right, plus 2, for example. And you want to take it from this form to this form. You know, firstly, I'm going to complete the square. It's going to be x squared plus 6x plus the half of this and square it. So it's going to be 3 all squared equals 2. I'm going to take this 2 maybe uh, the, uh, the other side, negative 2. So um, it's, uh, it's actually the half of the coefficient of x. And then you square it minus the same half of the coefficient of x then you square it so if you take it the other side it's going to be a positive it's going to be a positive three squared you know so x squared plus six x plus three squared is equals to so this is nine three squared is nine nine minus two is seven you see so we are already there so it's x plus three all squared is equals to 7. Then we take 7 the other side. Um, it's x plus 3 all squared minus 7, right, is equals to 0. So this is the function, right? Um, or you, can, you can write it in the normal form y is equal to x plus 3 minus 7. So we took it from here to here. So basically this is the process of um, completing the square. You know what I'm saying? Okay, um, I'm going to introduce to you guys the value of Q, you know. If the equation is already in this manner, say y is equals to x minus p all squared plus Q, Q here shifts the graph. Q is responsible to shift the graph vertically right is responsible to shift the graph vertically such that if q is positive the graph will go upwards it will be an upward shift and if q is negative it's going to be a downward shift okay um so basically that is the value of q i mean that is what q um is standing for you know, and I'm going to introduce to you guys um, 
what does p mean and also when p and q are together what do they mean entirely all right p is responsible responsible for the horizontal horizontal shift all right but now let us be careful guys as to what exactly happens here you know let's say we've got a function y is equals to a into x minus p all squared plus q i want us to see exactly how will p shift the function whether left or right because this is one of maybe some of the things that might confuse some people as to i mean it's like it has got an opposite effect let's say you had a function like y is equals to a into x minus p all squared forget about the q for now um say a is greater than zero and say p is greater than zero you know let's say you've got something like this you know so p i mean actually will shift the graph horizontally like let's say let's say the graph the original graph was like this right but if we say if we introduce p the the graph will actually shift to the right and here we're going to have p right and it's 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 something that is that is that we are not normally I don't know exposed to like for example when we have we have, we have x minus p we don't say we don't say x is equals to um, minus p right this is not the case but we say x is equals to x is equals to p so basically the gra this um, if p is positive p itself is positive and we've got x minus p all squared so basically this graph i mean this p will shift the graph p units p units to the right you know that you know what i'm saying let's consider another option um let's say you have y is equals to a into x plus p all squared um this is maybe your normal graph right this is x this is y okay now it's x um a into x plus p all squared so this thing i mean this um function this graph will be something like this here there's gonna be minus p so it's gonna shift the graph p unit to the left right so it's gonna shift the graph uh, p units to the left you know what i'm saying so this is the horizontal shift and let us just look at something guys before we go any further the turning point of this graph the turning point of this graph will be p and zero can you see that you know and let's look at this other one the turning point of this graph will be minus p and zero you see um if p is positive for example p itself is positive right so that will be that will what happened but when we do much more example you'll be able to appreciate the value of p even more you see okay and also um now you have a full y is equals to a um, into x minus p all squared plus q now this is the horizontal shift and this is the vertical shift of the graph so we are not we are not now limited to maybe graphs that are on the uh, y-axis but the graph can shift you know what i'm saying horizontally and vertically you might find a graph that might be here for example and this might be p and q the turning point you know so 
The advantages of having an equation like y is equals to a into x minus p all squared plus q, we are able to see the turning point from the equation, right? So, for example, if you've got something like this, the turning point will be um, p and q. Let's say you have y is equals to 1 into x minus 4 all squared plus 3. The turning point of this will be 4 and 3. Do you understand? Okay. Um, I think we're out of time. Let us meet on the next video as I'll be actually, uh, as we'll actually be tackling on how to actually sketch you know parabolas and you know it's actually so it's so much exciting so i cannot wait to see you guys on the next video do enjoy the rest of your day and if you're uncertain about anything just write on the comments below or do email me enjoy the rest of your day guys um the next video is coming